Tonight, North Carolina puts its undefeated record on the line as they host Virginia in the renewal of the South's oldest rivalry. Heisman Trophy candidate Drake May has been spectacular and has the 10th break Tar Heels screaming up the standings. Can the Cavs shock the football world? Or will Mac Brown and the Heels keep their perfect record intact? Kickoff is minutes away. with us for ACC football on the CW. Tom Wormy, along with James Bates, Trevor Scales will join us from the sidelines in just a moment. Virginia coming off that win two weeks ago. The Cavaliers looking for their first ACC win of the season. North Carolina undefeated. Number 10 of the nation, Heisman Trophy candidate Drake May under center. Folks, arguably the best quarterback in the land you're going to have a chance to watch tonight. Drake May, big time arm. He can run. He knows when to run it. Cool and calm. A great leader. And oh yeah, by the way, he's got some weapons. And as of the last two weeks, he's got one of the best weapons to throw to in the land. Here's touchdown number one of three against my Miami last Saturday night. Easiest throw for a quarterback right over the middle. And how about this clean pocket? Easy vision down the field. And Miami's going to take some chances. They've got some players going for the interception here because this throw has to be perfect. And it is. That was touchdown number two. Number three was a little bit more of an anticipation, a little bit more of a lead, but it shows you the timing. These two have been working together, maybe not in games all season, but in practice. So that's number three of four touchdowns on the night for Drake May. How about 51 career TD passes for May as well? For Virginia, the win two weeks ago against William & Mary. Their first win in almost exactly a calendar year and an important win in the wake of that tragedy in Charlottesville, James. Yeah, and, and we'll never know on the outside looking in just how much that meant, you know, for the past Last year, they've taken care of one another. They brought each other up, hugged one another up, but they never had that chance to truly celebrate, celebrate a football win, and they got to do that two weeks ago. They're going to try to make it tough for North Carolina to get a win on them tonight. We're going to celebrate ACC football tonight with the 128th meeting in the South's oldest rivalry, North Carolina and Virginia on the CW. Welcoming you back here to Canaan Stadium site of UVA versus USC here with North Carolina head coach Mac Brown. Coach, you're off to your best start as a program since 1997. How do you make sure that keeps going tonight? Uh, this team's been mature, Trevor. The, it's a rival game. Uh, we got a great crowd. National TV. What gets better than this? I told them tonight that uh, everybody expects you to have a letdown. That's what they say, and, and our brand hasn't been that good because we have had letdowns. So this team's got to be different and change that narrative. I dig it, Coach. Best of luck tonight. Get after it. Thank you, Trevor. Trevor, thank you. We look forward to your reports tonight. Of course, back in 97 was Mac Brown's last year of his first stint, James, here in North Carolina when they started 6-0. 64 degrees. It is clear, light breezes. It is near perfect weather in October in Chapel Hill. Is that a waning or a waxing crescent? Well, not it's a, a, full it's moon. a mul yeah. multiple choice? <laughs> I okay. don't know. I don't know. It's a, there's the moon. And, and Tony Elliott, you know, it's funny. He had the exact same words that he said to his team this week. He told us on our Zoom call earlier this week. He said, I told you, this is what you live for. This is what you dream of being a part of. Going on the road, you and your brothers taking on the number 10 team in the nation in their house on national TV. Prime time, no less. And it's always, 
always, it seems, a big shootout in the last few years anyway when these two teams get together, and that includes last year when North Carolina was a top-10 football team. So Virginia James won the toss, elected to defer. Last year, the teams met in early November in Charlottesville. 31-28 was the win for North Carolina as Drake May had a couple of TD passes and threw for 293 yards in the game. Chapman deep to receive the kickoff. Matt Ganyard ready to kick it away in the South's oldest rivalry on the CW. Chapman stumbles and regathers, but close to the 25. A flag came out behind the play. If it stands, the return is 23 yards from Chapman. It's probably going to be a hold and come back. It was thrown all the way across the field and a little bit late, so far away from it, so unfortunate for the heels that that is the case. There was a personal foul, illegal blindside block by the return team. The penalty is half the distance from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, and he, here come the Boo Birds. <laughs> they didn't like seeing those flags last week. And here comes Drake May to lead this offense. Wow, just the numbers have been so special against Miami the first time all season, though he didn't throw for over 70% completion percentage. But there you see the four touchdowns, zero interceptions, zero turnovers for this offense and a defense that forced four in the win, in the big one, the clash against the Canes. May has only thrown four interceptions this season. Of course, the penalties were an issue, James, against Miami. But they haven't been all season, just averaging about five coming in, which is pretty good, but then hit 14, had 16, and two of them were to climb. Amped in the back. May throws, that's caught. J.J. Jones on the ground. Let's take a look at today's impact players brought to you by Walmart Plus. Walmart Plus members save on free delivery plus gas plus so much more. Join today. Yeah, three great tight ends and of course here comes the running game. Marion Hampton. Eight touchdowns on the season. That leads the ACC. He's the ACC leading rusher. And here's a look coming right down the pipe. Big offensive line clearing the way. Review from Rep Cam, and now a deep ball for May down the sideline, looking for Walker all the way. Defended by Sam Westfall, it's a clean play and incomplete. Just ran out of room right there. It was a route maybe run a little bit too close to that sideline defensively. Tonight's impact players, James, brought to you by Walmart Plus. Yeah, we've already seen on that first play from scrimmage, James Jackson in on the, the tackle. And Jonas Sanker from right there in Charlottesville. Eight-man football at the Covenant School. And he's grown a lot since his high school days. 38 tackles, second most in the ACC coming in. May with a quick release. It's off target. Pass incomplete from Drake Bay, and now third and ten. Nesbitt couldn't catch up with the pass from May. North Carolina, Coach Brown's team first in the conference and third down conversions. James, 52%, second best in the football bowl subdivision on third down for the Tar Heels. Big one right here to start this game. May runs out of that pocket, running out of time and room, and just throws it to his own bench. So that brings up fourth down for North Carolina. Nice start for John Brzezinski. There he is, the defensive coordinator of these Cavaliers. Get off that field and what looks to be decent field position it over to the offense for the first time tonight. But well executed and a good job there on third down and 10. Knowing where you are on the field, knowing where they're trying to run those routes. Nothing there for Drake May and wisely just throws it away. So Darian Harrison is deep. Tom oh, McGinnis. Wow. Harrison steps to it near the 43. Breaks through close to midfield out about just short of it. 37 yards on the punt. Five yards on the return from Sudarian Harrison. 
Tony Musket, the senior from Springfield, Virginia, and a transfer from Monmouth, leads them out onto the field for their first offensive possession. Yeah, and he continues to play with that injured shoulder on the non-throwing arm. Will have surgery right after this season. Was injured in that Tennessee game and the loss in the fourth quarter. On his way back. A pretty good quarterback here for the Hoos as well. Flips it to Washington, trying to get around that edge, and he can't do it. It's a short game for Washington. Let's take a look at tonight's impact players, brought to you by Walmart Plus Walmart. Plus members save on free delivery, plus gas, plus so much more. Join today. Well, not just on the jet sweeps, but they're going to have to run the football tonight, whether it's Hollins, Jones, or Pace. And J.R. Wilson, you know about Fields, you know about Washington. They may be taken out of the play a few times here tonight. Somebody else has got to step up. Look for Wilson or Sedarian Harrison. Here's a nice second down and six for Kitchens. Musket threw a couple of TD passes in that win a couple of weeks ago against William and Mary. Brown game. And Paris Jones, who ran for a career high 134 yards in the win against William and Mary. Tonight's impact players brought to you by Walmart with North Carolina on D. Yeah, Cayman Rucker. He's electric, violent over there on that edge, and he'll come and he'll disrupt things in the backfield. Six and a half sacks this season, two and a half of them against the Canes last Saturday night. And linebackers, maybe one of the better linebacking combos in the nation, Cedric Gray and Power Eccles. We saw Eccles on the stop on the first play from scrimmage. Gray with over 300 career tackles for North Carolina. Musket just flings that one out of bounds, feeling the pressure. He took a hit as well. He was trying to go the way of Sackett Wood, and it was a good job by Eccles in coverage. And here you can see a little bit of a hit as Musket gets rid of the football. He's got to be aware in that pocket. He's taken some hits. One thing they've worked on here in this bye week is getting rid of that football. There's his offensive coordinator, Des Kitchens. Desmond Evans had the hit on the previous play. The Musket pass is a misfire from Musket. Looking for fields. <laughs> big Miles Murphy with that big eight. And on the golf course, they draw that eight and they call it a snowman. Miles Murphy, he, he looks like a snowman in that suit. You don't want those on the golf course. And you also don't want these on the football field. Third down and longs. 22 sacks given up by this offense. 14 of those 22 sacks have been on third down. Just 35% in the situation for the season for Virginia. And that might be a little bit short, a couple of yards short of the run by Hollins of eight yards. James, that 35% is 12th of the conference view from referee cam. Well, they got him in coverage here and a great look from that ref cam, and they're keeping him out there. Nothing to lose. Coming off your first win of the season, five and one on the road, top 10 team. Heck yeah, leaving him out there and see if you can Stay on the field and go try to draw first blood. They need two. Virginia, four of eight this season on fourth down. It's fourth and three for the Cavaliers. Musket, open man and caught. Second one down the sideline. And he's cut down near the 10. James, they got 22 yards on the play, converting on fourth down heck of a play call. You actually see this play a lot on the other side of the ball. North Carolina loves to run this with their tight ends and bring them out of there after the fake, the play action to the back. Everybody thinking it's going to be a hard-fought try at two yards. Instead, they slip out. Sackett Wood, and it's a first down near the 10-yard line. Sackett Wood had six catches, 94 yards a year ago against North Carolina. They're going to run it with Hollins. Makes the move at the five, and Hollins takes it to the end zone for Virginia. It's fall break here in Chapel Hill. Those students that are in attendance, a little bit stunned here is Virginia with a good stop on defense, and then they answer. Go right down, convert on a fourth down, and punch it in with big Mike Hollins. 11-yard TD run for Hollins. Will Betridge for the extra point. 
And the first points allowed at home in the first quarter this season, James, by North Carolina. It's seven to nothing. Credit number seven, but also that big who offensive line. That's what you dream about. Playing That's a it. top 10 team in prime time. You know? Hey, let's go. You ready to? You ready to? Up? You ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ha ha. It's what you do it for. Nights like this. It's why you work. Best in the league, right? Hey, you know what you got to do, right? You got to show it against the best in the league, right? Hey, that, hey the big time players show up in big time games. Yep. Well, Tony Elliott's team certainly showed up on their opening drive, James. Second rushing touchdown of the season. Mike Hollins to the end zone from 11 yards out to give Virginia the 7-0 lead in the first quarter. There will be no return. Chapman watches it sail through the back of the end zone. And you heard Coach Elliott, James, this is what you dream about. And that's a dream start for Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he told us earlier in the week, and he keeps repeating it, and it's true. It, you know, sometimes you get inside that bubble, and it's funny that Mac Brown said the exact same thing to Trevor. You get inside, and it's practice, it's meetings, it's classes, it's more meetings, it's more practice, it's lifting weights. And you, you, you get into that grind, and not that you don't appreciate it, but you kind of forget how special it really is and how much it means to so many people on the outside of that bubble. What a beautiful night here in Chapel Hill as well. They try to hit Walker on the edge. Just beyond the 25-yard line for Walker. Cam Robinson on the stop, just a yard. And again, for Mac Brown's team, hadn't given up a point at home with their 4-0. This season in the first quarter until that drive by Virginia, capped by Holland. Seven plays, 51 yards in just under three minutes. For the Cavaliers. Safe pass to the sideline and Walker, capable hands for the junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Cohen King was in coverage. They got five. On that first down, it was an excellent job by Kyle. He got it over there to Walker. He fought and fought. He won't get the credit with the tackle, but did such a good job to fight to keep Tez Walker, to keep him inside on that inside shoulder, all of his. Teammates rallying, so here's another third down. This time, just three to go with the empty set for Drake. May runs it up the middle. First down and more to the 40. Drake May goes eight yards to move the chains. Robinson tripped him up. Took a quick look. And this is what he's so good at, so dangerous at. You got to stay in those rush lanes, and even when you do, sometimes he'll hurt you sliding in for a first down. Up the middle once again. Hampton slicing his way up towards midfield. Nine yards for Hampton. Jonas Sanker on the stop. Second and short. Third straight play goes up the middle. That results in a first down. There is a flag on the far side of the field. And second and short. Hampton was the runner. That's Riley Johnson, our referee tonight. Initially pointing in the direction of Virginia. Illegal substitution, 12 men on defense during that play. Penalties decline, results of the play, first out. That's one thing that cannot happen with Tony Elliott's team. They can't turn the football over tonight, and they cannot give freebies to this Carolina football team. There's a flea flick. A little trick play. Mays pass. Caught inside the 30. J.J. Jones adjusting to that football. Another first down. May to Brooks. Tossed it back to May to Jones for 18 yards. Tempo from Carolina. Modest gain, if at all, from Brooks. Here's another look at it. An offense that can do just about everything. And oh, yeah, we've got a bag of tricks as well. They don't get it for a big hitter, but a nice pitch and catch. And moving the chains again for a first down. And now it's second down and eight. And a couple times that we've seen Amari and Hampton 
run the football, Virginia really hasn't had an answer. So we'll take a look at Lampkin when we come back. Tuesday on Inside the NFL, the guys break down the heavyweight battle between the Dolphins and Eagles, plus find out if the Ravens able to shut down the Lions' high-powered offense. Inside the NFL, now for everyone. Tuesday at 8, 7 Central only on the CW. Tonight, it's the South's oldest rivalry on the CW. Drake Bay, the Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback, and moving the ball for the Tar Heels. Throws it down near the goal. just a game changer good clean pocket again for Drake May and I mean look at the coverage it's, it's right there you've got nine on nine Cohen King has done a fantastic job at corner for the Hoos he's got his arms wrapped around Tez the extra point is good and four touchdowns for Tez Walker in the last two weekends and we're just into the first quarter here and we're tied up in Chapel Hill football on the CW is brought to you by Verizon my plan the plan for fans Virginia going wild back at 86 North Carolina winning that one 27 7 just part of the South's oldest rivalry and Drake May part of the fabric now of that rivalry with his touchdown pass that was his 500th completion of his North Carolina career went four for four on that drive Washington short of the 30 on the return for Washington all right on that first drive for Tony Musket and the who's take a look at Sackett Wood the tight end right there lined up in the backfield he's gonna come across the grain and somebody's got to go out there and forget about the run and cover that tight end running free a little bit too late. Huzzy getting over there to stop him. But what a huge fourth down pickup from Musket to Wood. Wood with a great game against UNC last year. And here come the Hoos for the second time tonight after Virginia marched right down the field and answered. Virginia's last win here came in 2019. Trouble for Musket. Got it away. He had Rucker draped all over him. As he tried to get it away. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Number 25 coming free. And they talked it over, and a little bit of booze from the hometown crowd wanting an intentional grounding, but yeah, inside the tackle box, but there was a receiver in the vicinity, so second down and 10, as opposed to sack number six and a half for Cayman Rucker. Kobe Pace is the back. Juggle that ball for just a moment. Got it back. Small gain of two from Kobe Pace. Rucker in on the stop along with Miles Murphy. Third down, Virginia. Yeah. Securing that football first and foremost. And Pace a little bit bummed because, you know, you get these opportunities like Paris Jones last week in the win over William and Mary. There you see him shaking his head. You got to take advantage, and bobbling that football isn't going to help you. Now what do you have on third and eight? Musket. Flag came out on the completion beyond the 35 to Washington. And there's a flag down. Huzzy on the stop. He needed to get to the 38. He's right there at it where they have the mark. But what's this penalty? Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense number 25. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That's 28. They said Rucker. So let's see if we can see it right there, just on the edge. And that left hand comes up under that, that chin, right there in front of the official. And these penalties that have stayed away for UNC, they reared their ugly head. 14, we mentioned, against Miami, but in the win. They had 16 flags thrown. Two were declined, and 
that one was going to be close. There you see the 147 yards. The mark was very close there on the spot with Washington. But the penalty will help move that football across midfield. 32 straight games with a reception for Washington. Skip dances. He got spun. He threw it out of bounds. Now they really want that grounding. It was Rucker again, James. Had him around the waist. Uh, they'll, they'll talk it over again. Was he outside the tackle box? Because there wasn't anybody there. And this is just too long to develop. It says a lot about that secondary. Rucker has him dead to rights. He might have even been down with the knee there. Let's see if we can see. Spot foul. Also lost him down. Second down. Virginia gets the penalty for the grounding. Rucker so far has been a problem oh, up against that Cavalier defense. Just ask Jerkovic a bit. Rucker had a sack on him. It was for minus 21 yards. Rucker with those six and a half sacks, James, tied for second in the ACC. Yeah, he's been fun to watch this year. Here's the quick pitch. Pace. Big collision at the 45. Base ran into power Eccles six yards rocked his world a little bit there tough though staying in the ball game and he felt the power right there didn't he Eccles came over and stood him right up Eccles 30 tackles coming in added a couple more already early in this game here's a third down and seven again this is when the sacks have been piling on a team that's had 22 against them this season Musket through the progression steps up trying to go underneath and it's incomplete looking for second wood Musket and wood combined on that fourth down play on the first scoring drive by Virginia not this time Gainer broke it up Tallahassee kid right there Childs high school started at FSU in a smart play how many times do we see guys just can't help themselves to just level a guy when he's coming across there with his head down but a nice job by Gaynor, not only to make sure it's broken up, but to put that head off to the side and not get a targeting call. Sparks with the punt. It's going to bounce inside the 10. A nice Virginia bounce straight up in the air and down near the 5. As Cam Robinson got down there on special teams, and that punt was 40 yards from Daniel Sparks. So a big field in front of Drake May. Let's take another look at that touchdown, the first one of the night for Carolina. And again, that pocket. I mean, this might as well be those shots we were showing you off the top of the show against Miami. Offensive line keeping their quarterback clean and talking about clean. Devontae Walker. I mean, talking about the, the energy that he has put in this building here on this football team. Beautiful throw and a beautiful catch. Walker, the transfer from Kent State, for a couple of years in that program. He is the intended target. It's well out of bounds. Cohen King was all over Walker on that first down play. Hey, Trevor. What's up, bud? Hey, run the damn ball was the hat that Chip Lindsey wore when he came in to interview for that offensive coordinator job in the offseason. And you kind of get the feeling that they could have a little bit more success if they would do just that. Well, they're going to look to do so, as you see, Omar and Hampton take the carry. That's exactly what this offense is built to do. Coach Lindsey loves the big bets. All of his guys are 220 plus power runners involved in the pass bro and really can bring the noise when they absolutely need to it's an identity that they hope to establish time and time again hopefully they can do so on this drive we got Gene Chizik over there on the side as well defensive coordinator third down for the Tar Heels May with the time sliding attempt beyond the 35 yard line and caught it's complete to Nate McCollum at a third down conversion conversion for North Carolina. Yeah, Nate McCollum says, don't forget about me. And how about this strike 
blindly throwing it out there. He's just got to trust that McCullum is going to come out from behind that coverage and just throwing it open. The field of the catch is under further review. So they'll take a look at the 31-yard pass play from May to McCollum. He comes in as the leading receiver this season so far for North Carolina. Another look at it, trying to get the hands underneath the football. I didn't realize it was that interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> My goodness. All right, so remember, this is Will to catch on the field as we take a look at these shots here. Fantastic replays from our production crew give you a field-level oh. look at it. Did he get the left hand underneath the ball, James, while know. it was behind his thigh? Well, that shot right there showed the tip of the ball hitting the ground. And I, I don't know that he had... He didn't have a hand under it at that point anymore didn't have control but what an effort and, and what a throw to throw him when he lets go of this football I don't even know that he can see McCullum well McCullum can't see the football it's sleight of hand and, a, and again <laughs> it's like an egg you must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call which on the field as you noted James was a reception from a column. And the officials are in conjunction with the command center, Charlotte, North Carolina, taking a look at this one, which would be a spectacular catch. Trevor? Yeah, as he was rolling over on that last little bit, it might have just nicked the ground as he was laying in it. So quickly put, let's see if they uh, saw the same up there. Trevor, we also saw that left hand try to get underneath the football. It was a heck of an effort, a contortionist effort, if you will, just try to wrap everything up. And the funny thing was, on first glance, James, we did not see this yeah. football moving around as much as it did. Right there, right there. And, and that, I think, is what is going to turn it over. So... If that's what they see, it'll be a, an incredible effort, all for naught. But now, Nate McCollum has been fantastic. 15 catches back in that Minnesota game earlier this season, 165 yards. After reviewing the play, the ball actually hit the ground, so it's an incomplete pass. It'll be brought back to the previous spot, fourth down. But James, you and Trevor had that one with the, just the tip of the football. Hitting the ground. Just, the by the, just by the hair on his chinny chin chin. <laughs> <laughs> the left hand was there. But the ball just nicked the artificial surface as well. So now a punt from their own end zone. McGinnis. It looked like a couple of Virginia players got tangled up, and then North Carolina was able to down it. So the punt, 38 yards from McGinnis. So that's Harrison. Collides with a teammate. Ball, fortunately for Virginia, just goes straight up. Gosh, Nesbitt, you know, maybe let that one come back down and see if you can get a lucky bounce into the back of one of those. Virginia Cavaliers and Tony Elliott's offense again with good field position to start this drive Remember they started that opening drive from right there at midfield and went down the score Musket What a one-handed grab by Jones reaching back keeps his footing And gets up near the line to gain he's got enough Are At the 36 yard line at 10 yards James Wow what a catch. He did such a good job running the football last week. Took advantage of an opportunity with Hollins hurt. Here he comes pounding it again. Man, that, that is one heck of a catch. Going back while he's running full speed in a different direction, going back behind him and catching that football. Some of these, these throws and catches are just unbelievable that you see in this day and age. These, these passing 
leagues that these guys are in in the offseason coming up in high school, the quarterbacks and receivers. Just incredible ball skills. It's really neat to see a sixth-year guy in Paris Jones just fighting and taking advantage of this opportunity. He's also going to be a gunner on punt cover team. He's got two catches on the night, had two all season coming into the evening. And now Jones again. Jones. Heavy workload for Paris Jones. Got six yards there. James, you mentioned it. 134 yards two weeks ago against William and Mary, rushing for a career high. Second career game over 100 yards. Here's third and short. One for three on third down. Musket still has it. He got Right at the 26, that was the line to gain by Will Hardy. This could be awfully close. Great job by Hardy in open field. Just a nice, solid open field tackle. And, and Musket, he's not super elusive in the open, but he's got to give a little bit more shake than this. He's coming out of that cut, and I don't even know that he saw Hardy. And a nice stop. He's short. It's fourth down and short. So once again, the Hoos are going for it. They already have that one fourth down conversion. It was an excellent call that time by the coordinator, Des Kitchings. Let's see what he's got for him on fourth and what looks to be less than a yard. So fourth down for Virginia. They just needed a little bit, and they're going to get it. So Brosterhouse came in, James, for the short yardage situation. Check out this shot. Wow, what a cool shot right there from the umps. Cam, our referee camera. And there you see that push. Mark Wilson is the umpire tonight. Thank you very much, sir. Getting some great shots for us. So Brosterhouse. Gets that short yardage. Two for two on fourth down. Musket fakes the toss. Throws it to the five. That second Wood, he's got it. Oh, another clutch grab from Wood. It's inside the five. Mark him at the three. Bauer Eccles has been good against the run and in coverage as well. Here they try to go a little out and up on him, a wheel route. Eccles is right there, but it's just a perfect throw and catch. Virginia trying to get it to the house, second ever, Mike Hollins. Hollins bashing his way to the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the game from three yards out. We talked about how big this win was two weeks ago for this Virginia football team. The brothers that they lost, and there's a brother right there who provides inspiration, whether he's carrying the football or not, because he was one that was injured with him. What an inspiration for all of us, and Mike Hollins in the end for the second time tonight, and the Hoos retake the lead. So Hollins had one rushing touchdown all season. He's got two tonight against the Tar Heels. Okay, I, I want to monitor Guys, for the rest of this season, if we're going to have the ref cams here on the CW, I want to monitor up here in the booth, and that's all I, I get to see. Man, that, that makes me feel like I'm, I'm back you know, a long time ago. I'm, I'm really old now, so I couldn't play it, but in virtual reality almost from a linebacker's lens, man, that's such a cool shot. Let me see Hollins, uh, that Rouge. University Laboratory School. You know, Hollins actually lost about 30 pounds after he was injured in the shooting. He was at about 208 at that point, lost about 30 and gained it all back. It's good to see him back out there. 82 and 29. Culver is deep. But again, your kickoff. Daniel, the oldest player in college football, 34 years old as he kicks it away. Fair catch, Carolina. Everyone at home, are you watching F Boy Island? Well, the answer should be F yeah. Watch an all new season of F Boy Island on the CW Mondays at 8, 7 Central. Stream free the next day on the CW app. Season three has started, by the way. 
the finale of season two a couple weeks ago was incredible. And it is about two or three shows in right now. They're already kicking F boys out of there left and right. Nice guys sticking around. They kicked a couple F boys off. So make sure you're checking it out on the CW when you're not watching us with all these great football games. Fantastic promotion from Bates. North Carolina tries to go up the middle for Brooks. There's not a lot available. There is no game. So Drake May, speaking of nice guys, 5 of 10, 55 yards, and the TD pass to Tez Walker of 25 yards. His coaches talk so glowingly about this young man. His sophomore season. Gotcha. Well, and that's going against the secondary that's really been banged up for Virginia. They've got a lot of guys that are missing here tonight. May sends it over the middle and incomplete. McCollum couldn't hang on for North Carolina. Here's a look at McCollum and there at the top of your screen and just thrown a little bit behind him and that's a ball that number six can catch. It's not a perfectly thrown football, but he can hang on to that one usually. One for three on third down. Something didn't look right along the line of scrimmage on third down. Walker the intended target. Flag is out. Offside, defense number 94. Five yard penalty, third down. Trevor, Tony Elliott is hot and he should be. You can't give those freebies of five yards when you have all the momentum in the house and help them out like that. That's exactly right. And you know North Carolina is just looking for something to jumpstart this offense, trying to get something going. Desperately want to lock this game back up. And so and Coach Elliott talked about being close and being frustrated with being close. Those are the things that help you close the deal. Right, and they've been close in a few of these losses, just one and five coming in. May got it away. Walker trying to come back to the football. Incomplete pass, and a flag is out. Westfall was defending against Walker. The pressure gets there. Just enough pressure coming up the middle from Foul Mui. And the big hit on May to make him throw the ball maybe with a little bit Holder, more. Defense number 13. 10 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So that penalty not there or anything at the end of the play. But Westfall having a feeling that Tez Walker's going to run right by him just trying to save it and play another down. And that's what they'll get. Now, that's a close one right there. And Felt like they had another stop, but instead a fresh set of downs at the fourth. May will hand this one off. Brooks into the line. Falls forward up near the 44-yard line and five yards for British Brooks, graduate student, Gastonia, North Carolina. And Ashbrook High School, where James Worthy went to school. May. Incomplete pass. Might have been a little bit behind McCollum, James. Yeah, that's that's back-to-back -back. tries at McCollum. Nice protection again, and that one a little bit high and hard for McCollum. Incomplete, so a third down and five once again as McCollum gets a little breather here on the sideline. So again, one for three. And third down attempts in the game for North Carolina. They lead the league in this category. Edges will bend. Pass is batted down on third down. Famui. So after he jumped James and the penalty against him, he pressures the quarterback and then knocks one down on third down for Virginia. Famui is fun to watch. He's very precise, great with his hands. Not just knocking down footballs, but great with his hands. You have to have great hands to be a, a good, solid defensive lineman in the sixth year. Player Aaron Falamui bats it down, and you got to be careful here. You see Tony Elliott and his staff waving their hands. That's a safe defense. You got to take it easy right here and make sure they don't pull a fake on. So May is now five of 13 through the air. And four of those completions came on the scoring drive as that one rolls to the sideline up near the 22 or 23 yard line. 
punt was 37 yards from Tom McGinnis. That's up on the North Carolina defense if you need it. And he's talking it over with James Jackson, the leader there in the middle. And just got to be smarter than that. Mac Brown as well over on the other side. He said he's talking it over with McGinnis, his punter. And remember, Ben Kiernan out for the season. The unusual punter, the graduate student from Dublin, Ireland, injured his knee. It was a big hit as he was on a punt block against Syracuse over on the sidelines. It took a big hit. So it would be McGinnis the rest of the way and injured kicker as well. Something Mac Brown has, has never had either of in all of his years of coaching. Just 33 seconds to go in our first quarter. Musket up beyond the 40 in the diving attempt by Malik Washington. He is the leading receiver for Virginia. Power Eccles trying to stay with Washington. It's been tough to do for defenders. Started the night with 44 catches, averaging over 15 yards per catch for Washington. 668 yards coming in, leading the ACC coming into this Saturday. Musket tosses it out to Pace. He hits some contact at the 25-yard line. Cedric Gray makes the tackle. Two yards for Virginia on what could be the final play of the first quarter. How about that angle, Cedric Gray. Some of that Bobby Boucher tackling fuel. Tackling fuel. How about this, too? Not only the first time trailing after the first quarter this season, this is the first time they've been scored on here in Chapel Hill in the first quarter this season. The Hoos trying to pull off the big upset, looking pretty good after quarter number one. We'll head to the second when we return. ACC football on the CW is presented by Verizon. What a first quarter, especially if you're a Virginia fan. There are the numbers from the first 15 minutes. And Virginia got that fourth down on its scoring drive. 22-yard pass play. Musket to Wood. Here they are, third and eight. Trying to go to the North Carolina sideline. That's going to be short of the marker by a few yards. A five-yard pass play to Washington. Marcus Allen. Tackled him out of bounds. Fourth down Cavaliers. Good job there by Allen, knowing where he is on the field, knowing where those sticks are. Most importantly, the line to gain. And a couple yards shy. And right at their own 30, the minus 30. This won't be a fourth down. They'll go for it, even though they're two for two on fourth down tries here in this game. Puzzy is the deep man. Sparks just got it away. Takes a funny bounce sideways out near the 20 yard line. 44 yards on the punt for Daniel Sparks. From the number one New York Times best selling author comes Sullivan's Crossing, this brand new CW original series. Stars Morgan Cohen alongside Chad Michael Murray and Scott Patterson and their return to the CW. Watch Sullivan's Crossing every Wednesday, 8, 7 central, only on the CW. Chad Michael Murray, One Tree Hill fame, back on the CW. Not to be confused with Chaz Michael Michaels. <laughs> the great figure skater. Check out Sullivan's Crossing. Check out ACC football. And the South Zone rivalry. Room to run for Hampton. And physical play on that sideline. Jonas Sanker rode him out. Not before a first down from Hampton. He got 12 on the run. Yeah, I think you need to see a heavy dose of that here for the rest of this football game. And that back and forth game last year was so close. It was the running that took over in the second half. And here to go back to back plays on the ground to Hampton. A first down pickup on the first carry. And Mac Brown wants a face mask on that second Hampton run right here at the end of that play. Right there. It's Deata James, 18 for Virginia. And will go unflagged. Second and five. Hampton will ran for 197 yards against Miami. Down the sideline. Open. 
to the end zone. And a touchdown. Nesbitt on the run. 62 yards. North Carolina. Well, plenty of time for Drake May to scout the field. And he hits Nesbitt in full stride had a beautiful throw to him on a touchdown as they take a look at his feet looks to be in bounds against Syracuse a couple weeks ago was a great throw and catch this one is a great throw the catch and then the run three outstanding tight ends here on this North Carolina squad John Copenhaver Kamari Morales and Bryson Nesbitt the junior out of Charlotte wow what a throw Last couple that we've seen, Drake May a little bit off target trying to hit McCollum across the middle of the field, but streaking down the sidelines. It's perfect on that one. 62 yard TD pass. May to Nesbitt. We're tied at 14. Coming right at you. We've seen the ump cam, and here comes the pylon cam, and the heels have tied it at 14. We're tied at 14, early second quarter. May to Nesbitt, 62 yards down the sideline. Third receiving TD of the season for Nesbitt. Drake May now up to 14 touchdown passes this year. Longest pass play given up by Virginia this season. 62 yards and a score. Jones and Washington deep. This is Jones. And Washington comes out of the end zone. Fights his way up near the 25. Well, Mac Brown is among the greatest ever. How about most wins at the Bulls subdivision level? Paternal leads the way. Bobby Bowden, Florida State. Pop one. The names on this list, James. Unbelievable. Stag, Saban, active. Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech and Mac Brown, who earlier this season, as you noted, James. Defeated Mac, uh, defeated Beaver's son Shane yeah. in South Carolina. Looked really good in that opener. Absolutely. And probably the only place that could have brought him back into coaching right here in Chapel Hill, too. Exactly what he said as Washington gets tackled. Just two on the play. This is the second go round at North Carolina for Mac Brown. Fifth year of the second stint. 105 wins here at North Carolina, and that's the most in school history. Quick over that ball and quick with the handoff. It looks to be a first down run. Paris Jones moving those chains. You know, and it, his wife Sally he came back to a function a few years ago and said, It's the happiest I've seen you. Uh oh. Pressure on Musket. The ball's on the turf. He caught heat from both sides. Bo Atkinson first on the scene. Covered up by Virginia. Stevens, Brian Stevens, I think, is going to fall on this. And what a fortunate hop for Virginia. Take it back. It might have been Jimmy Crisp. Turnovers will not be part of the game plan if you want to walk out of here with a win, Virginia. They have got to take care of that football tonight. Now it's a second and 16. Loss of six on first down. Musket trying to stand tall. Has to do a little jitterbug and then throw it. It's up past the 35 yard line. Six yards to go to Twitty. So now third and long for second year head coach Tony Elliott across the way. What a contrast in head coaches tied at 14 here in the second quarter and third and nine. One for five for the Cavs on third down. Yeah, they have converted a couple times on fourth down, but here's a third down and long. And again, they have to take care of this football. Let's see if Gene Chiswick, he brings the heat. At the 45-yard line, trying to break that tackle. Washington, a flag is out behind the play. They mark Washington almost right at the line to gain at the 46. number seven ten yard penalty third down so they 
caught Mike Hollins on the play. Seven. There he is, Hollins, who usually does a pretty good job against those blitzers, but and they've got some linebackers coming from off right there, just so tough to deal with. And Hollins trying to save his quarterback. Has no choice but to hold on tight. So instead, what was going to be an interesting measurement is a third down and 19. Someone said that pass bros running back is getting up there and getting to the point of attack. And sometimes you got to make sure you lock in before you start reaching to get out of position. Trevor, four receivers set for Virginia. They're going to run it with Hollins. Conservative play call on third and 19. Hollins, who's got two rushing TDs in the game, got seven. That'll bring up fourth down for the Cavaliers. Gainer on the stop. Yeah, and watch big Miles Murphy get up and go. I mean, for a big man, 310 pounder, and he can move and cover some ground. Almost look like a linebacker heading over there trying to help out Tamari Fox in there as well. So a nice stop there for Gene Chizik's defense. Sparks back out there to punt. He booms this one inside the 15. Hudson he watches it bounce inside the 10. Takes inside the five. It takes a sideways roll and out of bounds. Near the six yard line for Daniel Sparks, the senior. 61 yards on the punt, trying to pin the heels. I mean, a boomer, and the spin is going to take it right out of bounds. So, a long way to go. ACC football on the CW is brought to you by Verizon. My plan, the plan for fans. Part of this rivalry, Virginia. The upset at home against number six, North Carolina, which was driving late in the game. Virginia had an interception return for a touchdown and took out the highly ranked Heels. Hampton. Beyond the 10. He got four. North Carolina's average starting field position, James, in this first half, the 15-yard line. And the third time starting inside their own 10 in this first half. Yeah, speaking of averages. There's a guy in, in Hampton that's he's averaging about six yards a carry coming in. Jones is open. That's a first down for North Carolina. King forced him out. A couple quick strikes right there to get off from near your own goal line. Give yourself some padding and back to the ground they go. Nine on the previous play and that up to the 25 yard line. Hampton on the rush for seven. Hampton very rarely, and I don't know that he ever has carried for a negative yard. He hasn't, at least this season. And there's a perfect example right there. You know, Trevor, there's something to be said for an offensive coordinator to know you have a back that he's he's never gonna rarely is he gonna be stopped for a no gainer he's not gonna be stopped for negative yards right i mentioned the size of these cats and just how they tend to lean on you but beyond that it is about making sure you as a back in the spatial awareness to lean forward at the finish to make sure that you're protecting the rock of course but also fighting for those yards whenever there is an opportunity to do so gene chiswick has to stand up for this one on third and short and diving through the line First down, Hampton got six. And again, you establish that run, and it's it's really tough on a defense. Yeah, it's, it's tough when they hit a pass on you, but when they're able to run the football five, six, seven yards a pop right down the middle, and that sets up everything else for Drake May in the passing game. Walker. First down, North Carolina, just short of the 45-yard line. That's four catches for Walker. And that's exactly what Coach Lindsey mentioned he wanted to do. Set everything up off of that play-action look. Getting that run game going, establishing an attitude. May, the deep ball is too far for everybody. He has hooked up with Walker for a touchdown of 25 yards. That was McCollum running down the sideline. The other TD pass, 62 yards to Nesbitt in this first half. After the tempo, they take a little breather right here on the second down and ten up the middle. But again, handing it to the ACC's leading rusher. We've seen those tight ends getting involved. We've seen the receivers. 
Pick your poison defensively on what you're going to stop, and here it is on third down and six, perhaps two down territory, too. Okay, looking over to the sidelines, two for five on third down. From their own 49, third and six, North Carolina. May, deep pass, and again, it's too far. Tried the other side, same result. And that was Walker trying to run under that one. Cohen King back there defensively for Virginia. Now it's fourth down. John Rudzinski, defensive coordinator. He brought some bodies, and they put a little bit of pressure in there on May. So a couple throws right here on this drive they'd like to have back. And here's your big fourth down and six for North Carolina now after Virginia has already converted on a couple fourth downs, able to take it down the field the rest of the way and score. Four of eight on the season on fourth down. May has to improvise. Trying to run away from the defenders and King. Almost had the pick for Virginia. As May threw that one on the run. Turnover on downs. And Virginia, excellent field position on North Carolina's side of the 50. Great job to get off the field. But if you want to pull the upset against number 10 on the road, you got to hang on to these. That one could have been intercepted. Tied at 14 here in the second quarter, 7.06 to go. Tom Morby, James Bates, Trevor Scales is on the sidelines. Yeah, I'm looking at, you know, I, all right, I get it. If the fourth down is going to take it to midfield, interception would have been back there, but I meant Joe Montana. <laughs> Little trick or razzle from Virginia. It's back to Musket. He launches it into double coverage. Receiver fell down. Looks like defenders and receiver got tangled up. Musket to Jones, back to Musket, and looking for Washington. Yeah, Tavon Holloway, great job. The freshman out of Virginia Beach, playing against some guys that he went to high school with and competed against in high school, but he's not fooled one bit right back there. The legs got tangled up, and after the big turnover on downs and after the break, Virginia tries to hit him with the big one, but they get nothing, so it's second down and 10 from midfield. 8 of 14 and 81 yards in the throw game for Musket. They'll go with Jones. He scampers out of bounds, not quite to the 40. Holloway forced him out. Eight yard gain. Be third and short now for Virginia. What a big stop it was for that Virginia defense there on fourth down, too, after that 62 yard touchdown. And then, getting out from their own goal line and marching it up to midfield. And here comes Jones. Wow, you got to keep feeding that hot hand. Mike Collins has two touchdowns, but right at you is Jones. He's been fantastic in the run and pass game. Now they want to throw it down inside the 10. Malachi Fields, the intended receiver. We saw Fields with a flare for the dramatic on a Hail Mary toss the end of the second quarter against Boston College where Virginia had a 21 7 lead ultimately lost that game they've had three losses by three points or less this season and there is a penalty illegal substitution gets the defense 12 men were on the field when the ball was snapped five-yard penalty first down each team has been guilty of illegal substitution here tonight. Mac Brown, the College Football Hall of Famer. As intense as ever. And James, we had that meeting yesterday with Coach Brown. Seemed a little more businesslike than usual, didn't he? But perhaps, but he's he's still one of the all-time <laughs> best to sit with on a Friday he afternoon. Is. Oh wow. The national champion as well. Musket decided to keep it. Not afraid to take on some contact. He's inside the 20 into the red zone with a first down for Tony Musket in Virginia. A little bit of gunpowder in that musket on the ground. How about that? First down in the red zone. Trying to keep up the pace, and now a penalty marker comes out before the snap. Saw some Virginia players clapping after that call. See what Riley Johnson has to say about it. Offside, defense number 12. Jumping in the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, first down. Those, those little penalties, 
And they can, they can crush the momentum. They can also help to feed the momentum of what this offense has right now. So now it's a first down and five. Already two for three in the red zone of the game. He shovels it forward to pace. I think that's going to get classified as a pass. Gray impeded his route. Pace does. I mean, they get it out there to him so wide, so fast, but that just shows you. And the reason they're doing that is because of 33. Cedric Gray, fantastic linebacker who made the tackle. And even with that quick pitch to get him outside right now, he still can't run from the leading tackler on this team coming in with 42, the ACC linebacker of the week, Cedric Gray. Good job. They knock him down out of bounds in the loss of one. Second and six. Pace. Two for Pace. Came in Rucker on the tackle. Senior from Hartwell, Georgia. And now third down from the 12. Two of seven on third down in the game for Virginia. Knocking on the door again. Their fourth trip to the red zone of the game. They need that seven yard line for a first down. And third and five, musket quick release. Inside the five, and he found Washington. It is first and goal, Cavaliers. Nine yards on the toss. Their leading receiver in the ACC moving those chains. Fresh set of downs inside the five. It was Hollins trying to cut to the end zone. Flag came out behind the play. Hollins already has two rushing TDs. Well, Mike Hollins is good when he gets inside holding, the 20. Holding, holding. Offense number 71. Ten yard penalty. Wow. First down. Ugana Nana, the right guard. They've switched some guys around. He had been at right tackle. Jimmy Christ is back out there. And and that's costly. They were they were about a yard out. It was going to be second down and goal. Let's see if we can find it right there, the right guard. Uh, and again, I mean, Eccles and Gray, even when they're not in on the tackle, they're, they're disrupting everything and forcing that holding penalty right there because Power Eccles was going to come free and perhaps blow it up in the backfield right there. This is supposed to be the eighth play of the drive after the penalty is assessed. 4.03 on the clock. The question was about the clock. It will start on the ready. Clarification from Riley Johnson. Des Kitchings is the second year offensive coordinator. Spent some time in the ACC, eight years at his, as an assistant at NC State. He was a great receiver in his college days at Foreman, Gene Chiswick. He has a son that's playing some good ball for Foreman right now. Going to flip it to Washington. Trying to get around that edge at the 10. Carolina Blue, roadblock for Washington. Got three. Once again, will register as a pass for Musket. Second and goal now from the 10. Gene Chiswick won a national championship as the head coach at Auburn and was Mac Brown's offensive for a defensive coordinator. And he won that title at Texas. Long-term relationship continued here in Chapel Hill. Musket to the end zone. Ooh. And intercepted in the end zone. Chapman battling with Malachi Fields and he won the fight for the interception. What a big time stop. Man coverage, eyes on the ball, one-handed grab, and the heel stand. Coming up on the Subaru halftime report from Chapel Hill. We'll learn more about Drake May. We'll go around the ACC highlights and stats. That's the Subaru halftime report. Drake May and his teammates helped on the defensive side of the football with the interception from Armani Chapman. 
tenth of the season for North Carolina, and that leads the ACC as a team defensively. Hampton on the run for four. Good job penetration there by James Jackson, but one thing you can't do is just run through there recklessly. You got to set it right there and take on that blocker, not just trade off one for one. And we'll start on the ground here. You saw what May has done so far in the game. James, 317 yards per game is his average. And that's the best of the ACC. He's gone to 2,000 yards passing with his effort tonight. Couple of TD passes as well. Third and short now. Trying to pass forward and he bounces it just beyond the 30. Looking for Copenhagen. Wow. Closest defender was Sanger James. Okay. Got to send that punting unit in right here. Tony Elliott wants a punt safe again. So the incredible interception, one handed grab in the end zone to turn away Virginia. Three quick plays later, and UNC's got to punt it away. Remember, Virginia will get the kickoff to start the second half. Well, Virginia had gone nine plays on that previous drive prior to the interception. But because of the defensive effort, they're going to get it right back. Tied with the number 10 team in the nation. Fair catch indication and made. Harrison has it for Virginia. On the 39 yard punt with 4.1 sec six seconds of hang time. So Musket right back out there after the interception. In the end zone. And, and it was a ball that was Chapman's all the way with such good coverage. Ball just kind of a little bit too low to give any, any sort of a chance to his receiver, one that he'd like to have back. And it was. An impressive drive after the stop by the defense. Three timeouts and plenty of time to march it right back down, though. That was the third interception of the season for Musket, who runs this one short of the 40. Four yards for Musket. And Tom, it, it was a performance against Miami. Big game last Saturday night. Zero turnovers for North Carolina, and they forced four from the Hurricanes. Done a great job intercepting passes this year. Nine coming in and nine all of last year. That was Jones on the run. A couple of interceptions, a couple of fumble recoveries as well against Miami for North Carolina. You know, we make a, a big deal about Hampton not taking any losses on carries. He's a big body guy. Paris Jones is only 5'7, 179. I mean, and, and he is running with some passion right now. They need to keep feeding number two. They've been very successful when they have. And he's been good through the air as well. Third down and three here for Gene Chiswick's defense now. Three of eight on third down. Musket looking left the whole way. It's behind the receiver. Malachi fields an incomplete. Four down. Chapman in coverage. Tried to leave it back shoulder. Chapman again with outstanding coverage. The transfer from Virginia Tech. We've seen some great cornerbacks come through not only Chapel Hill, but Blacksburg, Virginia over the years as well. Heck, Charlottesville too. Good job defensively. Sparks will punt. Huzzy to return it. 52-yard punt return TD for Huzzy in the win against Pitt. Air catch indication. Let's it bounce at the five, and it goes into the end zone. ACC football on the CW is brought to you by Progressive Insurance, the right call for your home and car. And Fresh Pet, it's not dog food, it's food food. We are tied at 14, Drake May. Leading the Tar Heels back out onto the field, undefeated, 6-0 on the season, 3-0 in conference play, 4-0 here in Chapel Hill and Keenan Memorial Stadium. This Virginia defense has done a good job of keeping the offense's players in front of them all season long. They gave up that 62-yarder on the touchdown pass earlier. They got to keep them in front. 62-yarder was the Nesbitt. 
The other TD pass was to Tez Walker, who has this one for five yards. It was a 25-yard touchdown play. And a little bit harder to come by. It's been an outstanding performance by a banged-up secondary, and they've done a good job of keeping Drake May running in check as well. May just too far for the receiver. Had a couple of receivers in the same vicinity looking for McCollum and Sanker in coverage for Virginia. Four TD passes, a season high. A week ago in the home win against Miami, 41-31 for May. And there, there have been a couple misses just where the Cubs had a step. 9 of 22 now for May, and here's a freebie. Should be an offsides and a free play. Back to the air, fight on the sideline, deflected away from Jones. Westfall back there with Jones. Penalty marker. Offside. Defense number 15. Five yard penalty for Dell. Well, Tony Elliott, you see him with the big exhale. He's got 26 seconds trying to hang on and keep this score knotted at 14. Knows how hard it is to win a football game, especially against the top 10 team. Hampton past the 30. He's got the first down. Second and third effort to the 35, six yards. A penalty against Virginia, the sixth of the half. And now North Carolina has all its timeouts with 21 seconds left. So North Carolina will take its first timeout. Tied at 14. 21 seconds to go. We're waiting to hear on the assignment, James. Here are the four options coming up next week on the CW Telecast Possibilities. Wow. I mean, you've got the textile bowl between Clemson and NC State. Tony Elliott knows all about that rivalry. Duke and Louisville should be a heck of a game. Duke's got the Florida State Seminoles down in Tallahassee tonight. Georgia Tech with the loss to Boston College waiting on North Carolina. It's usually an interesting game. And Miami, who lost here last week, will host these Virginia Cavaliers down in South Florida. That's some pretty good ones there. Any chance we could do them all? <laughs> yeah. No? I wouldn't yeah. mind. Okay. Do like a simulcast. Sure. Like they do in a playoff baseball, college <laughs> baseball. Yeah, that would be fun. And Riley Leonard did start that game for Duke tonight. Trying to get his first win ever against Florida State, which has won all the previous 21 meetings. How about May with the fancy footwork? And then he slings it to the 45. A marker is out as he hit Walker. 13 seconds left and a penalty marker. And that's Ben Smiley slow to get up. In fact, he'll go down to one knee. Yeah, he's been banged up a little bit. Hate to see that. What was that? I didn't see where that flag was thrown. What part of the field? I never even saw it on the ground. Riley Johnson saw it. Trying to sort it out here. So, so that's fact. Riley Leonard is, is going tonight after that high ankle sprain and, and missing the NC State game. Is that right? That is the okay. update. Right. Breaking news. That'll be a, a fun one for the victory bell when these two get together, North Carolina and Duke. Holding, holding. Defense number 13. Penalties to climb. Results of the play is the first down. And there you see it, Sam Westfall. And if I'm even, I'm leaving. And he has to reach out there and grab J.J. Jones coming out of that break. That game for the victory bell, James, November 11th, right here in Chapel Hill against Duke. It's always fun, but this year, these two teams keep winning. Wow. A lot of meaning on that date between the two teams. At the 40, that's first down yardage. Tez Walker, 13 yards. How about seven grabs in the first half for Walker? Had six a week ago for 132 yards and three receiving touchdowns. Had six in his first game against Syracuse as well. Just looking that football in and 
securing it. Nice big frame, 6'2", 200 pounder. Out of Charlotte's West Charlotte High School. Playing his third game since being granted eligibility by the NCAA. Old teammate of mine, Mo Collins, who played at Florida, was a first rounder for the Raiders, was a head coach there at West Charlotte. And he passed. Big Mo. Best smile on guy you'd ever seen. Here's a look at some of the travels of Tez Walker. Devontez Walker that season at North Carolina Central was canceled. He transfers up to Kent State where he had 12 starts at Kent State all back in 2022. And, well, if you followed college football, you saw the roller coaster that they went through here in Chapel Hill at the beginning of this year. But Coach Mac Brown fighting for him, fighting for him extra hard. He said, hey, I, I treat all of these players like they're my own. And if that was my kid, I would have fought just like that. But, Squeaky wheel getting the grease, and they got one heck of a player out there. Clock is running down on North Carolina. That's complete near the 25-yard line. They're going to mark him out at the 26. They got 14 yards on the play to Walker. That's going to set up a field goal opportunity for Noah Burnett. Burnett onto the field. He has hit from 48 yards. That was at Pitt. In a winning effort. Twenty-five of thirty-one for his career. And staring at a forty-three yarder right now for Burnett. To give the heels the lead at halftime. Burnett. He's got enough for the forty-three yarder over the crossbar. For 10 on the season, Burnett. The first half that goes back and forth just like last year up in Charlottesville. UVA leading 14-10 last year, and this time at halftime, just over, up by three UNC. Here's Trevor Scales. Here with head coach Mac Brown. Mac, you get a big drive to end the half there. Offensively, what are you hoping to carry into the second half? Well, we, we, I told you we had to get a fast start, and we didn't. We, we, we got a penalty on the kickoff. We got backed up. We didn't stop their run. Had a couple of trick plays early. Everything we could have done was awful. We had very poor, poor field position throughout. Their punters done really a good job. Um, so what we've got to do is settle down and start the game over. They get the ball to start the second half. I think we're settled. We're playing better defense. I took a risk. I shouldn't have taken it at midfield there. Uh, but our defense bailed us out. So we got a turnover. I think we're ready to go now. So, so we'll play much better second half. I appreciate the time. Coach, best of luck. Thank you, Trevor. Chapman had the interception in the end zone, and then Burnett on the final play of the quarter. And the 62-yard TD pass to Nesbitt as well. North Carolina 17-14, halftime in Chapel Hill. Carlo, thank you. Tomorrow the Live Golf season concludes in Miami as the 2023 team championship will be decided. Can Dustin Johnson of the four aces hold off the field and walk away with the title in the final event of the season? Live Golf Miami, the final round tomorrow, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on the CW. Four teams competing for $18 million in first prize money and a $50 million total purse. Live Golf Miami, the team championship. Do I sound that good when I say Tom Wormy? Wow. It's a different Tom accent. Wormy. A different accent. Uh, <laughs> it, oh, it's like British Brooks. Did he, is he the one who threw it back to you? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this score at halftime. Some may be surprised, James Bates. Are you among them? You know what? It, at the end of the day, it's college football. And, and no, not one bit. I mean, we had we had Louisville run into Pittsburgh last week after they had beaten Notre Dame and beaten up on them pretty good. And they fell to Pitt, who was having a tough time winning football games. So not really, but a couple big quarters to be played right now. Fair catch from Washington. 
So Virginia will start with the football in the second half. North Carolina got the 43-yard field goal at the close of the second quarter to lead. And, and you know what? I would go so far as maybe Matt Brown wouldn't be surprised because he said he, he told us he said I put together I put together all the upsets so far in college football of the undefeated teams, these teams that were supposed to go in and win each weekend, and I showed it to him. And the first one that I showed my team was Louisville falling to Pitt. And there you see him looking on as. His defense, led by Gene Chiswick, the defensive coordinator, will be out there to start. And it was a defense that was phenomenal coming out of that halftime locker room, the first four possessions of the second half against the Hurricanes last weekend. Musket on the run. Not afraid of contact. He has shown that on several occasions tonight. Tony Musket got three, ran into Gray. On well, the tackle for North Carolina, which is 4-0 this season. When it owns the halftime lead. Okay, okay, okay. The adjustments have been very good for this North Carolina team. You look back even at that Pitt game. Pitt did a good job running the football in the first half. As the game went on, that changed. Miami's first four possessions, by the way, in the second half last week. A fumble, an interception, a three and out, and a turnover on downs. Here's a chance at least for a three and out for this defense. Three of nine and third down in the game. Call it third and five. Musket looking that direction all the way, and it's caught by Washington. Look at him fight for the extra yards after the reception. Chapman brought him down, but not before. An 11-yard gain and a first down. And quickly over the ball, UNC tries to make a substitution. There's a flag down. It'll be on the substitution or lack thereof. They didn't get off of the field, but it won't matter because this one is near the sticks. And there you see, there's the, there's the Tar Heel player. The ball will be snapped. Illegal right substitution now. on the defense. 12 players on the field when the ball is snapped. Penalties decline. Results in the play. First down. And what that is, if, if you don't make a substitution on the offensive side, you, you don't have to wait. You have to get set, obviously. But you don't have to wait for them to substitute. Rolling the dice a little bit there, UNC and getting burnt. Musket. Throws on the run, and that's incomplete. Looking for Washington as we check in with Trevor. Yeah, fellas, coming out of the half, I got a chance to speak with Virginia head coach Tony Elliott. He mentioned, again, the turn of phrase, we're tired of being close. Mentioned that drive that got shut down by the interception down at the one. The penalty was massive there. And defensively, he mentioned that they are just excited about how scrappy that they're playing on that side of the ball. They've got a talented team in North Carolina that they're trying to defend, and they're doing a good job of doing just that thus far. Virginia runs it with Hollins. Cavaliers have rushed for over 100 yards in this game against that Carolina defense after running for 221 yards in a season high in the win two weeks ago against William and Mary. You know, Trevor Tom is probably right here, two down territory on a third down and eight. So not necessarily having to get all the way to that 38 39 yard line on this third down the who's two for two on fourth down conversions quick look washington gonna have to do it himself could not get away from the second man and he's short of the first down marker by a couple of yards it was at the 39 he got six Eccles made the tackle Chapman's going to turn him back in. Nice job by Washington. Go back and get this one. And then get north and south. Get whatever you can. But it's not quite enough. Here's another fourth down and two with that offense staying out there. Elliott squad two for two in the first half on fourth down attempts. One of those was a 22-yard gain on a pass play to second wood. Off to the right. This is fourth and short. Musket diving for the 39. They're going to mark him at the 40. And immediately, the indication, turnover on downs as Gaynor and Eccles combine on the tackle of Musket on fourth down. And they're fired. 
fired up here. The fall break going on, but the students that are in the house like what they're seeing right there going down towards that student section. Again, crossing over the tight end, Sackett Wood, but this time he's out there to block, not to receive, and an excellent job of rallying by that defense. Getting off the field on fourth down. First time in the game that Virginia missed the fourth down. Now two of three in that situation. Right side and room. And a first down and spinning inside the 45-yard line. Omarion Hampton got 18 on the rush. There's a good look at it from that ump cam. And a nice job of getting out there and blocking, leading the way by that offensive line for Hampton. This is May. He tossed it to his left in Copenhaver. I'm not sure that was the design of the play, James, but I, I think it was. I, it's a good looking little play there. And, you know, Drake May, we've seen him get so crafty at times. We saw him in that, that game a few weeks ago against Pitt where he had to switch over and throw it left handed for a touchdown. And now May. Inside the 10, broken up at the last second. Tavon Kyle came in to knock it away from Nate McCollum. Wow, that route was in his hands. About as close as it can be about to turn and try to get to the end zone. And Kyle right on time to get up there and knock it to the ground, raking through those wrists. So here's a third down and two now. McCollum had eyes for the end zone before that was broken up. And now May trying to get it done. He does. May stutter step inside the 25. And a first down, North Carolina. Ten yards on the run. Drake May, the sophomore. Last year's game in the second half, it was the run game of North Carolina. And here they come out hitting hard with Hampton. And then a little bit more design quarterback runs as well. More Hampton James into the red zone. Down to about the 15 or 16 or so. Eight yards for Hampton. We told you he ran for 197 yards against Miami. Not his career high. It was in the double overtime win against Appalachian State for Hampton, who ran for 234 yards. way dragging dragging Cavaliers with him inside the five for Nesbitt Nesbitt with the 62 yard touchdown catch and run in the first half this time trying to power his way with some help from his friends into the end zone it will be a first down and goal regardless and right back over the ball may in the heels Drake Bay, a three-yard touchdown run, heels back of the end zone. in for the extra point. So the first trip to the red zone tonight against Tony Elliott's defense produces seven points. May will do it himself into the end zone of the 10-point lead. CC football on the CW is brought to you by Verizon. My plan, the plan for fans. The South's oldest rivalry back in September of 97 and a win for number five, North Carolina. And that season, they went 11 and one. Their only loss was against Florida State here in Chapel Hill. They won the Gator Bowl against Virginia Tech the last year for the first go round for Mac Brown. It's a fair catch near the 25. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Drake May. That's 17 unanswered points.
we saw this theme James a week ago against visiting Miami where North Carolina trailed at the half by three and scored the next 24 points to win that game 41 31. Yeah and thanks in large part to a defense that just kept giving that ball back to the offense and that's one thing that Musket and this Virginia offense cannot afford right here to turn the ball right back over to a UNC offense that is really feeling it. They've got that tempo rolling. They've got their foot down on that gas pedal and it's on the metal. They need to slow that down. Swing it out to pace. Gets past the 30 yard line for five yards. The two TDs for Virginia. Rushes for Mike Hollins of 11 and three yards in the first quarter. Virginia scored in its first possession. First down, pace, six more. One thing at those, looking at those halftime statistics, you look at the time of possession. Virginia had the ball over 18 minutes. And with that, it keeps the ball out of the hands of those big playmakers and letting that offense just get lathered up like they were on that last drive. Virginia led in the first half, 14-7. It's pace against Rucker, and Rucker wins that fight just a yard. North Carolina came back with the 62-yard TD pass to Nesbitt. Burnett hit the 43-yarder, last play of the second quarter. And then May just a moment ago from three yards away into the end zone for a TD scamper. Musket on the run, right up the middle of the field. And plenty of room for Musket. He pops off down to the 40-yard line. Bill mark him at the 41, and he got 20. Nice design quarterback run right here, and everything opens up for him down near the 40 yard line and working with that injured left shoulder is non throwing shoulder that he will have surgery on as soon as this season's over with injured it in the opener against Tennessee. Musket missed three games because of that injury. Pace once again. Steady series of assignments for pace with the musket run up the middle sandwiched in between. This is a big answer so far anyway on this drive second down and seven now for this Virginia offense. Musket stepping up open man over the middle first down 25 yard line Malik Washington and 14 yards to Washington. What an addition he has been for this Virginia team. He now has nine catches. He's been fantastic leading the ACC in receiving yards coming in. And North Carolina needs to know where number four is every single time they're on defense because you know Des Kitchens is going to keep drawing up those plays to get it to them. Here they've got a pistol look. Four times this season, Washington has gone for 100 yards receiving or more. Down near the 20, Hollins. It's knocked out of bounds. Stick lane number one in Carolina Blue there. Four yards for Mike Hollins. Well, and right there's an example on the ground where Virginia has had their success is powering it up the middle. Even with the smaller back with Paris Jones, they have not been able to get out to the edge and get that corner turned on this speedy defense. Doing a good job of tracking him down outside. 148 yards on the ground for Virginia, which came into the night at the bottom of the conference in rushing offense. Virginia able to call a timeout. It'll be second and six coming up for Tony Elliott, the Cavaliers, when we come back on the CW. Inside the NFL, the guys break down the heavyweight battle between the Dolphins and Eagles, plus find out if the Ravens were able to shut down the Lions' high-powered offense. Inside the NFL, now for everyone. Tuesday, 8, 7 Central, only on the CW. Oh, by the way, the Rams and Steelers are playing, as we show you Ramsey's 100th year for Ramsey's on the sidelines here in Chapel Hill. Virginia is threatening on the edge of the red zone. Flying over that 20-yard line is Hollins. Got hit by Stick Lane. 
Dick Lane from West Palm. Safety stepping up there and dropping him in a hurry. Excellent job. The transfer from Georgia State. Ninth play of the drive. That's down nearly 11 and a first down. Washington again. Eight yards for Washington. Ten catches in the game. Malik Washington. He's a transfer from Northwestern. Hollins. What a cut at the 10. Hollins down to the two. And maybe inside of that. Mike Hollins has done the damage near the goal line tonight for Virginia, and he got nine. Great vision. Cuts on a dime and brings it right back across. Here he goes again. Carolina was ready. No gain. Once again, Stick Lane getting involved. Hollins with two touchdowns already tonight. You get him inside that 20, and he turns into a... A different cat, man. He's he can smell that paint in the end zone. Here's a third down and one, going right into that student section, making a little bit of noise for Gene Chiswick's defense, trying to get a big stop. Hollins had only run the ball six times prior to tonight. He's carried it ten times this evening. Hollins trying to batter his way down to the goal line, just a little bit short. Will be enough for a first down, though. They keep him out of the end zone, but not past that yard to gain. Good job washing it down there by the right side of that offensive line. The new bodies over there for Tony Elliott. And they'll let him get set here. And it's first and goal with four minutes left in the third quarter. Go up the middle. Into the end zone and a touchdown. <laughs> From just a yard away, Mike Hollins slams his way into the end zone for the third time tonight for the Cavaliers. Tom, what an answer for this offense, for this football team, as we take a look one more time, and that ball definitely across the plane. A little bit of help from his friends with the push from behind, which is perfectly legal now that was Grant Mish but to answer after that impressive drive first time UNC had the ball in the second half to go right back down the field he needed that in a big way still trailing by three and Drake May and company will have the ball back when we return Football on the CW is brought to you by Sonic. This is how we Sonic. And T-Mobile, it's better over here. Back in Chapel Hill, the South's oldest rivalry baits is delivering tonight. As Virginia just took it in the end zone. Third rushing TD of the game for Mike Hollins. That's a career high for the senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Carolina has won the last two meetings between the teams. The last win here for Virginia came back in 2019. Chapman will not return that one. Well, last time out, first drive of the second half, Drake May doing it himself. In the first half, he was one rush for eight yards, but three carries on that first drive of the second half for 18 yards, capped off by that touchdown run, his fifth touchdown of the season. And it was an impressive one. The offensive series called by Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator. Virginia answering, though. Let's see what they've got defensively. May gives that one off. From the column. It'll be a loss of one. A little flip pass play for the Georgia Tech transfer, Nate McCollum. McCollum is special, just like Tez Walker, but he's had a tough time getting going. A couple couple drops at the one almost incredible catch with his feet. And here they do a good job defending the jet sweep to him. McCollum does not have a catch tonight, and May is in trouble. And he gets toppled by a group of white shirts led by Charmier Carter. Carter and company are going to do a great job of just running the game up front and then 
walking right back into the lap of Drake May. Didn't expect him coming through there. And John Radzinski played his ball at the Air Force, calling him up right there. He lost seven on the previous play as May dumps it to Brooks on third and very long. And there is no gain. And now Virginia is going to get the ball back. Punting situation for North Carolina. May unbuckles and heads to the sideline. Big three and out to just take back that momentum for Tony Elliott's defense. And just like in the first half, how many times did we see him? Chance to have the ball in outstanding field position one more time. This is the way they started the game. Second straight, three and out, North Carolina. After scoring 17 straight points, Virginia came back with a touchdown on its last possession. It was Hollins from a yard away as McGinnis punts this one away. Sort of wobbly and it checks up. Still rolling inside the 35 before Carolina gets to it. So the punt by McGinnis had some backspin. And in total, it's a 17-yard punt. Let's go down to Trevor. Just incredible energy from this UVA sideline defensively. You can hear him hooping and hollering. And again, repeating those words, tired of being close. They are absolutely looking to finish this real. They feel as though they can compete with this North Carolina team. A dangerous team when you get them going momentum-wise are the Cavaliers. Absolutely, Trevor. And talking about close without the win, another North Carolina team from right down the road, NC State, a few weekends ago on a Friday night, unable to pull this one off. But this one here on the road against the top 10 UNC team. Knocked down and incomplete. This is a third straight drive for Virginia starting in North Carolina territory. And the last one went 13 plays, 74 yards, took five and a half minutes. And they got the Hollins touchdown from a yard out. Nice job there by Evan Evans. Not going to get to that quarterback, separating on that blocker, get those hands up, bat it down, second down and 10. Musket past one man and inside the 30 for Musket. That's four yards on the run for tough Tony Musket. Hester and Evans collaborating on the stop. Third down. You see the numbers from Musket. The, another gritty run. We saw Anthony Calandria on that Friday night filling in for him. Did a fantastic job. The freshman from St. Pete. And running with the man who won the job at the beginning of the year, Tony Musket. Here he is on third now. Musket dumps it off. Hollins, one on one in space. And now reinforcements come for North Carolina, and he stopped short of the first down marker. Eccles, first contact, three yards on the play and fourth down, Virginia. Great job by Power, Eccles in open field. Nice job by Musket, letting all the pressure get to him before he dumps it off, but an even better open field tackle to force this field goal try. Power, Eccles, and Seth Gray continue to be all over the field, making tackle after tackle. I have Gray at about a dozen right now. 45-yarder for Betridge, closing seconds, third quarter, and seven of eight on the season. Betridge to tie us up, and he's done it. Will Betridge and the South's oldest rivalry is all tied at 24. What a ball game as Betridge has tied us. This is what we have potentially coming up next Saturday, Bates. No matter where it is, we'll crank up the action at 2 Eastern. Well, and the update on two top 10 teams, or two top teams, Duke and Florida State, tied at 17, just like we are right here. Trying to get a big win in the panhandle of Florida before going on the road to Louisville next week. And Miami and Clemson underway as well so some big games next week on the CW but also some big games going on right now we've got one right here in Chapel Hill just answering in this second half this UVA offense and the defense as well There's some good stands 
Chapman. Fair catch. By the way, we'll have that information on our destination on Monday. Check your local listings, game and time in your area. I'm so glad that you're with us for the 128th meeting in the South's oldest rivalry of North Carolina and Virginia. They are tied with Georgia and Auburn, which have played 128 times. And the only rivalry that's gone on longer, Wisconsin and Minnesota, 131 games as they play for Paul Bunyan's Axe. 24 all, 32 seconds to go in our third quarter. Right up the middle, of the pressure. May got it away incomplete. Up near the 40-yard line, James Jackson came up to put the heat on May. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a delayed blitz. There's seven, James Jackson right in the middle. Nobody there for him, and he does a good job of pulling up and not putting a big lick right there on Drake May and drawing the penalty flag. Second and ten. May keeps it and throws. That's Walker in stride, 40-yard line. First down, North Carolina. King with the tackle and 16 yards. May showing you how cool and calm he can be back there in the pocket. The blitzer, he gives a little pump, lets him go airborne, and then delivers it to Walker. He still has it, throws on the run. 46 yard line back-to-back -back plays for a first down 12 yards to Nate McCollum and that'll do it in the third James Bates We're all tied up 24 all into the third North Carolina with the football and moving it Last 10 points by Virginia to tie us up Drake May with a couple of TD passes and a rushing TD Mike Holland three rushing TDs 24 all Ready for the fourth quarter on the CW. ACC football in the South's oldest rivalry is tied at 24. Tom Wormy, James Bates, Trevor Scales on the sidelines in our outstanding ACC football production crew with you from Chapel Hill. May try to unload. Inside the five and caught in stride for the touchdown for North Carolina. And it's J.J. Jones. Holding number 88. And it's coming back. Wow, they're not going to like that one bit. Nobody in this house wearing the Carolina blue as Mac Brown takes a look at it. Here you see the holding is called on Morales. And he just tackles the, the rusher there in Kyle. He just really overpowers him. Kyle tried to go low. Morales is 6'2", 245. Tavon Cal is 5'11", 181. He just tried to go low, and, and Morales just went down and just tried to bury him into the turf. Upset with himself, and what a beautiful throw that they take back off the board. There's Morales, the graduate student from Lincoln High School. Tallahassee area. Negates a 47 yard TD pass play. Spinning and making the catch is Nesbitt. As May took a hit. Famui knocked him down. And here's the pressure. Look at Famui. Just with the bull rush getting to him. And May came up limping a little bit, but. He seems to be looking down at that foot. What a great job of adjusting to that football, pulling it in by Nesbitt. Hampton takes it for first down yardage. He's inside the 35-yard line. So Hampton now with 17 carries in the game. We had 26, as you mentioned, in that, that App State game. It, it's always a battle when App State and North Carolina get it on. It doesn't matter who's doing what that year. A little misdirection from North Carolina. Walker dropped at the 30. Cohen King, one-on-one -on -one tackle, four yards for Walker. Yeah, Carolina had one blocker for two guys, and Cohen King, the unblocked Cavalier. Not only hitting that outside shoulder free, but 
dropping Walker as well. Carolina taking their time now. They had so much success when they hit that tempo first drive of the third quarter. May avoids the pressure. Just a little touch pass. 20-yard line. First down and more. Hampton down near the 10. Card of the tackle. 19 yards on the play. Well, whether it's a handoff in the backfield or right here on this little dump pass, when the pressure gets on May, expect Hampton to run it as hard as anybody out there on the field. As a senior, the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of North Carolina, out of Clayton, North Carolina, Cleveland High School. No gain for Hampton on the first and goal play. Drake May is 19 of 34, 258 yards, and two touchdown passes to Walker and Nesbitt. May looking left. Incomplete through the hands of J.J. Jones. Trying to angle his way to the end zone and not happy with himself on that effort. Well, he's got to have, you know, McCollum is going to get so many balls. Tez Walker is going to get so many balls. So when that ball is thrown to you, and he's made his big plays throughout the season, <laughs> averaging over 18 yards a catch, had six catches under 17 yards against Pitt. Looking at his first touchdown this year, and he held on to it. This is third down for May. Throws it into the back corner of the end zone, and it's incomplete. Receiver was out of that back corner. The column down there. A bunch of Virginia players running over to the aid of their teammate, Cam Robinson. And just ran out of room. And look at May, the, the strength slinging it. Hopefully that. Oof, careful on those sidelines. Wow. That was all right. It's McCollum trying to drag the foot. Both players. Pylon Cam clearly out of bounds, unable to get that left foot in bounds and in the end zone. And now field goal attempt coming up for Noah Burnett, who has already made from 43 yards. That was in the second quarter last play of that quarter to give the Tar Heels the halftime lead. 17-14. This from 27 to give the Tar Heels the lead in the fourth. North Carolina is in front. 27-yarder, now 11 of 11 on the season for Noah Burnett and his second of the night. ACC football on the CW is brought to you by Verizon. My plan, the plan for fans. The South's oldest rivalry, November 20th, 1941, Virginia. With the win at Chapel Hill, 28-7, and then just a few days later, events would change the course of history. Yeah. Sweet CW sports league. <laughs> Sweater win. It's a ground ball and scooped up. Malik Washington. It's gotten a little bit cooler as the evening has gone on. At one point during the day, James, I looked at the thermometer, 77 degrees here in Chapel Hill. It's a little bit cooler. Your hotel room a thermometer <laughs> on the window? <laughs> it was in my vehicle. How's okay, that? Okay. 55 degrees right now. Okay. Trevor, how is it down there, Trevor? It's got that quarter zip on? It's football weather, baby. Like, yeah. this is exactly what you look for on an October evening. That's coming from a Harvard running back right there. This is, you guys, it got really cold up there for you guys. Yeah, and I didn't like it. <laughs> Musket hands it off, Paris Jones. This rivalry began, James, in 1892. The teams played twice that year in Charlottesville and in Atlanta. Who was the president of the United States in 1892? Any guesses? No. We'll come back to it in a moment. <laughs> Second down, Virginia. Keep you guessing. I bet you Trevor knows. 
We know we got a three-point game, that's for sure. What a pass! Musket just threading that one in there to Malik Washington. At least three defenders around Washington, but the pass was perfect from Musket. What a big night for the ACC's leading receiver. Big chunk of 30 yards on the previous play. That's along the sideline. Malachi Fields getting into the act. Well, you know, Fields has been kept kind of quiet tonight, but not number four. And we saw Tony Elliott say to him in pregame, we had him mic'd up. He said, you're the best. And the best, they come out and they perform against the best. This is a top 10 team. And almost predicting it, number four, what a night he's had so far. That was the first catch for Fields on the previous play. Down to the 20, Paris Jones. To revisit our trivia question, President of the United States in 1892 was Benjamin Harrison. Did you have that? No, I didn't. No. Jones has the football. A run into a teammate near the 20. So that's a minimal gain at best. Came in Rucker. And now third down for this Virginia team, which is three of four in the red zone tonight with that football just inside the 20. And we're inside of 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. We saw Virginia in the first half drive it down and throw that interception in the end zone. They cannot afford to come up empty right here. Third and four, Musket has it, diving for the first down, inside the 15, Tony Musket, six yards, and a fresh set of downs, Virginia. Wow, those guys getting out of there so fast, just trying to go stop that run, and taking advantage of the aggressive defensive play, letting it all clear out, and let those big guys just wash down that defensive front, and getting just enough to move those chains, first down and 10. Musket out of the pocket, being chased. Got rid of it, Washington to the five. Washington still going to the end zone and in for the Cavaliers touchdown. Malik Washington at 14 yards. There's some who's in this house, aren't there? Aren't many of them. But they're fired up right now. Their electric playmaker, the transfer from Northwestern, who made his way back home for his fifth year. Went to high school at Parkview High School in Lawrenceville, Georgia. And back here, a part of the South's oldest rivalry, and a huge part for the Cavaliers of Virginia. Fifth time this season, Washington over 100 yards receiving in a game. He's got 115 tonight and the touchdown. And look at the little big man. One, two, three, four tackles. Power in his way into the paint. Who's on top? Virginia has taken the lead in this long time rivalry in the ACC between the Cavaliers and the Tar Heels. Tony Musket with the pass to Malik Washington. Drake May must come out and answer. With 8.51 to go in the fourth. He's up to 258 yards passing. He leads the ACC in yards per game at 317. Chapman deep. Meets it for the fair catch near the four-yard line. 8.51 to go in the fourth. What a game unfolding in front of us. James Bates has Virginia taking the lead, and Drake May with the two TD passes on the evening. 62 yards and 25 yards. For those passes for Mays, up to 14 touchdowns thrown this season. And a critical drive right here for North Carolina. Malik Washington likes playing against teams from from the state of North Carolina. He was ACC Receiver of the Week in that NC State loss a few weeks ago. 
May still has it. Throws on the run. Beyond the 40 and incomplete with the ball bouncing on the turf. McCollum couldn't come up with it. And a couple drops tonight. And a couple by Nate McCollum. He's too good of a receiver. This is too big of a series right here to try to come back and answer for North Carolina. Had two options out there to Drake May. Copenhaver was out there in the flat as well. So a second down and ten. And off it's just short of the 30. Omari and Hampton. Tom going into this drive right here. Virginia had held the ball for 14 minutes more in this game than Carolina, keeping it out of the hands of the big-time playmakers. Trying to stay perfect and rank in the top 10 for the first time since September of 2021 for North Carolina. Third and six. From about their own 29. Mays pass. Sales, it's too high. It's over the head of McCollum. Doc Chapman. So that's fourth down for North Carolina. How about this Virginia defensive effort? Rodzinski bringing a couple bodies there and picked up, but still a little bit of pressure in the face of Drake May. Nobody quite to him, but still just sails it a little bit high. A good job in that secondary. And again, remind you. That that's where Virginia has really had its fair share of injuries from those defensive backs, but those backups are playing really well tonight. Maynard the punt. Ball pops in the air after hitting a helmet. It's out of bounds. There is a flag on the play. So Darian Harrison was the deep man for Virginia. Maybe just interference on. That catch. Kick catch interference by the kicking team. Number 20, 15 yard penalty. First down, timeout. You saw the fair catch signal that was there and just running out of real estate, couldn't get out of the way. So plus 15 when we return. The standings in the ACC, and it includes number 10, North Carolina tonight. Right now trailing Virginia, looking for its first conference win. Florida State and Duke going at it. A couple of ranked teams in Louisville also number 21. And James this year, no divisions, top two teams. Percentage-wise, an ACC play will meet Charlotte in early December. Yeah, right now at halftime, Duke is up by three and about to go to half. Clemson and Miami tied at seven. Maybe the best one of all right here, though, in Chapel Hill. 31 27. That's up the middle. 35 yard line. It's musket for 18 yards. Again, great job blocking up front. Just talk about great vision with running backs. The quarterback as well, right there. The wrap up Hollins. Uh, with that shot, you saw the, the left shoulder taped up of musket. He's making all these big runs for his offensive coordinator, Des Kitchens. But they say it's like a, about the size of a, a lemon or a lime, a lump that sits on his shoulder. He'll get surgery after this season. His non-throwing arm, of course. It cost him some playing time. Anthony Colandry, the freshman, played well in his absence. Muskets back, and he's running the show right now. He's thrown it again. This is Wood down the sideline. Inside the 20 and a first down. Sack it Wood. Cedric Gray on the tackle, 18 yards. A couple of big first down catches by Sack it Wood here tonight. The first, none bigger on a fourth down and six. They slip him out of the backfield and set up the opening touchdown. First points of this game. It has been a back and forth battle ever since then. Fresh set of downs right now for the Hoops. Four for five in the red zone. 
Collins responsible for a lot of that scoring with three rushing TDs. 11 yards, three yards, and one yard. And that's for a team that came in, James, 13th in red zone offense. Four of five tonight. How about that? Never. Never gone on the road and beaten a top 10 team. Tony Elliott telling his troops all week long, this is what you dream about as a football player, as a young football player, going on the road and taking on a top 10 opponent in prime time. South from the 50, Musket tucks and runs inside the 10. Chapman dragged him to the turf. Seven yards for Musket. Last win against a top 10 team for Virginia James. Came back in 2005. They won at home against number four, Florida State, 26-21. Third down, Virginia from the nine. Four of six on third down in the second half. Hollins following his blockers. Hollins, the ball came out at the very end. Goes through the end zone. Hollins was right at the goal line. There's a fumble from the field of play through the end zone. Touchback. First down. Wow. If this stands, obviously they'll take it up there and take another look at it. Sackett Wood is going to come across and lead the way. And here's Mike Hollins. That ball is coming out, and that ball is out. It's out. It sure looked like from that angle before he crosses. That's a fumble. That is North Carolina football for the second time tonight. Virginia gets all the way down and turns the football over in the end zone. An interception in the first half by Armani Chapman. Wow. See if we can get a number. I wasn't watching the number. We want to make sure. We It was a money check. And now May, with the momentum, hits a man at midfield. The pass complete. Doc Chapman has it for North Carolina in the Virginia real estate in 33 yards. Amazing momentum shift. What a call by Chip Lindsay to throw it deep. They want to toss it again. Over the middle and past the 30. And inside the 20 for Tez Walker. And even though you'd love to eat up a little bit of that clock, this offense has been at its best when it hits that tempo right over the football and snap it. Just keep them on their heels. May puts on the brakes and gets dragged down at the 20. Was not fooled. Smiley, who left the game earlier with an injury, has been dinged throughout this season with a big open field tackle on a guy that's very tough to bring down. Both of these teams have had some outstanding tackles in space, great defensive play. And now Carolina choosing to catch their breath a little bit with a second down and 12. May. The pass hits the turf and incomplete. Looking for Doc Chapman. This will be interesting here. Obviously, you want the touchdown, but if you don't do anything on third down and 12, there's plenty of time left on this clock. And you've got three timeouts. Might not necessarily be one where you go at it for four downs. Get those three points and then get a defensive stop and a chance to go win it. May on third down. That's the dance. Throws it to the end zone. And a diving. 
diving attempt incomplete looking for JJ Jones Cohen King defending for Virginia fourth down Wow, so much time Drake may buying even more time and I thought initially King got a hand on it I'm not so sure he did a great job of fighting just to disrupt and get in there and help knock that ball away Drake may staying on the field here on fourth down and 12 you know and it's one thing it's not a Virginia offense that has been easy to get off of the field they have controlled this football and Mac Brown thinking hey we've got to put it in right now fourth and 12 May oh, inside the five what an attempt by Walker he got some hands on it he wants a flag and he's not gonna get it on fourth down so now 0 for 2 in the game on fourth down for North Carolina Malcolm Green defending Walker transfer from Clemson a lot like his coach and here he is just manned up just doing a good job of sticking right on that route he's got a hand on that jersey and that's where that's where they wanted a flag thrown and they won't get it though so after the huge blow down at the other end the fumble going out of the back of the end zone the defense stands and now 312 left to play still three timeouts though for Carolina Musket hands it off to Jones it's a robust gain on first down for Jones bringing up second and short eight yards on the rush a robust gain and not really a robust guy but he plays <laughs> with so much heart Paris Jones has been so much fun to watch running that football for Tony Elliott so just second and two Virginia has two timeouts North Carolina has all three the clock is rolling. And we can let this one tick all the way down. I'll do just that. Crunch time in Chapel Hill. Into the pile and driven back. I want to use that timeout. Here he comes right now, Mac Brown. It's timeout number one. We will also step aside. 31 27 Virginia late in the game. Just what you dream about, playing a top 10 team in prime time, you know? Hey, let's go, you ready to? You ready to? Up? You ready? Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> it's what you do it for. Nice like this. Coach Tony Elliott, pregame, nights like this, trying to pull a monumental upset. Virginia won two weeks ago against William and Mary. They stopped an eight game losing streak. Their last win prior to that, it was October 20th of last season at Georgia Tech, 16-9, and they've got a first down, and the clock is moving. And they go with Pace. You know, it's they trust all three of these backs. Kobe Pace hitting that line hard and moving those chains on a third down and short. So the clock stock stops with the timeout. North Carolina has taken it. One remaining, two for Virginia. And again, in the final two minutes on first downs, the clock will stop. That's the final two minutes of the second quarter and fourth. The Virginia Cavaliers, one and five on the season, James. Trying to pull this upset, get their first ACC win. Stop a two-game losing streak in the series. In the South's oldest rivalry, which has delivered at the highest level tonight here in Chapel Hill. You know, and Mac Brown told us that he he put together a list of all of the big upsets in college football so far this year, this past week, and we actually had one on the CW last Saturday night. Undefeated Louisville coming off of that huge win over Notre Dame goes into Pitt. The Panthers had lost four in a row, but they get him with Vayer, a brand new quarterback, in his first start. Flag is out on the play on first down. The run by Paris Jones. Probably a hold right here. This is 
Not what you need. Holding offense number 89. 10-yard penalty. First down. Penalty against the Cavaliers. They've been close this season. A loss at Boston College by three. A loss by three against NC State at home. They lost to James Madison by a point. North Carolina 6-0. Their biggest challenge came in the double overtime win against Appalachian State. 40-34. to and Drake May had the game-winning 13-yard TD run in the second overtime. 31-27 and 2-11 to go. We've seen some craziness in college football this year. Mac Brown talking it over with the officials. After discussion, the penalties decline. It's second down and eight. And the clock will start on the snap. And again, Carolina has the one timeout with 2.11 to go. Second and eight. And a big penalty, but choosing to decline it. And it's a matter of downs. One more snap. Yet, but can. I mean, that's saving a lot of time for North Carolina. But North Carolina needs the ball back on downs. And the run past the 35 yard line to the 37 for Paris Jones. It's a four yard run. And North Carolina taking its final timeout. Leading, trailing rather. 31 27. 2.07 to go in regulation. Just an amazing evening of football. So glad that you have been with us. James, it's Virginia trying to pull this incredible upset. It is. We, we started this show. We talked about their win, their first win in, in a calendar year, really, since, since the tragedy there on campus and losing three of their brothers right there on that football team. And we talked about this past year and how close they've become and how they've helped each other through it. But they finally got that chance to celebrate together. Their first win in almost a year against William and Mary and here to go on the road and to have a chance to knock down number 10. Imagine that celebration, but a lot of football left to play here, Tom. 207 and a third down and four. They found a way to convert so many times tonight. This one is huge. They're gonna run it and come up short. Well short. No gain on the play. North Carolina cannot stop the clock. There was a loss on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down for Virginia. Tony Elliott needs another booming punt from Sparks. We've seen him blasted a couple times here tonight. Once able to knock it down inside the five yard line on a 60 plus yarder. The next time it was just about as long but went into the end zone they'll let this clock tick down and punt it away at about 120 or will they get it off Virginia's going to take a timeout to prolong the drama with 121 to go in the fourth it'll be Sparks punting and Hussey the deep man does have a punt return TD this season that came against Pitt Mac Brown's team trying to stay perfect on the season, but trailing 31-27 late in the game. Had a 17-14 halftime lead. Had been undefeated with the halftime lead, 4-0. They did add one second to the game clock, 122 on fourth and five for Virginia. And again, the Cavaliers have not defeated the top 10 team since 2005. Malik Washington, a big part of the effort tonight with 12 catches, 115 yards, and a touchdown. And he did most of the work fighting for the end zone. Sparks is averaging 52 yards per punt tonight, as long as 61. Let's see what he can do here with 122 to go, and Huzzy deep. 
Here is 15. It's going to bounce. Just beyond the 30. Huzzy steps to it. Near the 25, and he steps out of bounds. 44 yards on the punt, five yards on the return. 112 to go. Carolina trailing. And to start with for Mac Brown on that punt return, excellent job by Huzzy. He had the 52 yard punt return for a touchdown in the second quarter against Pitt. And this one's not a big time fireworks return, but to step up and to catch that ball, there could have been about almost 10 seconds go off the clock if they let it roll on past him. And these punt cover guys milk that clock a little bit. 112 and a bunch of weapons for Drake May. May throws it at complete Jones. It's only a couple of yards there. May's over 300 yards passing, 10th time in his career. Got to hurry up. No timeouts inside of a minute to play. May looks down the field. Got rid of it. Just short of the 40 and complete. J.J. Jones came back to it in front of King. Stepped out of bounds. First down, North Carolina. They got 11. Great job by J.J. Jones. Quarterbacks in all kinds of trouble and just rolling out and comes back to him to help him out and bails him out there. 45 ticks now on the clock. The player of the year, the ACC from a season ago, trying to lead his team down the field. That's the Virginia side of the 50 and caught Taz Walker. Successive plays and first downs, 14 yards. Mac Brown in North Carolina. Made back to pass again on first down. Extending the play. He just heaves it into that Virginia bench. And with that, Virginia might want to get a couple fresh bodies out there to rush that passer. They're out of gas. And Drake May, just too much time, but a good job in the secondary by Virginia to clamp down on everybody. So 31 seconds remaining. No timeouts left for North Carolina. And here we go. May just barely. And the ball is caught. Intercepted James Jackson for Virginia at the 42. May got rid of it as the pressure was coming strong. The ruling on the field is interception by Virginia. First down. If this stands. Which from up here, it sure looked like it. Here's the fresh bodies that we were talking about and the hit on Drake May just as he's releasing it by Paul Akir. And there's some tired bodies on the offensive line as well. Don't forget about that. Just going right around Barnes at the left tackle. And there's the hit. Got to take a look at that back end. Great job going after that arm. For a team, James, that had just three interceptions on the season, James Jackson, I mean, look at this view from referee cam. Incredible. You are right in the middle of that play, which potentially could seal the victory for it, Virginia. It, it should stand. What a play by James Jackson who thought he had a huge block for the field goal try against NC State. He was flagged. He used his, his teammate to boost himself up and over. And In conjunction with the command center, Charlotte, North Carolina, taking a look at the play. You know, May was hit as he threw. Jackson diving for what could be a Virginia interception. And the last time last time that North Carolina turned the football over, there's a good look at it. You know, not only does he have control, but he even seems to turn it and tuck it as he's going down to secure it. And I don't see how there's any way you can overturn this. And there's the indication. Wow. The interception will stand. They took a look at it. 
Jackson with the interception for the Virginia Cavaliers. On any Saturday, James, in the ACC, you just don't know what could happen. Wow. And we are witnessing Virginia football history. First top 10 win on the road. First top 10 win against an opponent since 2005. And the Cavaliers have done it. Tony Elliott and Virginia, a stunning upset in Chapel Hill, 31. 27 as the final seconds tick off the clock. Celebration down on the field, and as it seems like these Virginia Cavaliers will continue to do for the rest of, of their days, they will make plays and, and think about their fallen brothers of last year Lavelle Davis, Devin Chandler, and Deshaun Perry. Wow. What a what a amazing football game and a big win for Tony Elliott. And here he is with Trevor Scales. Coach, an incredible win. The first time you've beat a top 10 team on the road ever. And to get two wins in a row now, if you were tired of being so close, how does that feel? First of all, got to give glory to God. Um, and these, these young men have been through so much. They believed every single day since November 13th of last year. This program has believed. So just, man, uh, proud of the staff, proud of the players, so happy for our fans, our administration. Uh, man, they just believed and they fought. And, and we have been close. We have been close. And we said that tonight was the night we were going to stare that line in the face, right? And we weren't going to back down. And uh, just the credit goes to the players. They, they played their tail off. And to have the game in on that interception, to have your bats and defense fifth best in the conference, for to come through like that, what does that mean for this? Oh, it's huge just to see guys, man, playing. You got to play the entire game and, and, and find a way to make a play, right? Not waiting on somebody else to make a play, but, hey, I'm going to be the one in that moment. And James Jackson has made plays for us all year, but the credit goes to the pass rush. The pass rush, you know, forced the air and throw, and James was able to just finish it off. Offensively, you had quite the performance from Mike Hollis, and just being able to dominate the time of possession, how does that propel you going forward to the rest of the season? Well, you know, we talked about the first half of the season was behind us and, and we were in control of, of our destiny in the second half and told this team that hey we still got an opportunity to to accomplish a goal of going to a bowl game right but you can't go 2-0 until you go 1-0 and tonight we had to do it against a top 10 team on the road and I man they're an unbelievable football team and hats off to Mac Brown and what he's done with that program I expect that they're going to win a bunch more games uh, but just uh, happy that the Lord chose us to be victorious tonight. Did you know that this was your first top 10 win on the road? <laughs> yeah we, we had talked about it and one of the things I told the guys is we got a windshield mentality always about what's in front of us we wanted to play our best game. We had a chance to make history, and we wanted to go 1-0. and Make sure you go celebrate with the fellas. Congrats. 31-27 as the Cavaliers celebrate here in Chapel Hill. Just a thrilling game. Both teams, incredible efforts. And in the end, it's the win for Virginia. First ACC win of the season. So much significance, James behind this victory for the Cavaliers. Yeah, you look at it on paper, this matchup, and there really shouldn't have been much of a chance given to this Virginia football team, but that didn't matter to them. Just like Tony Elliott said, it was just up to them and those guys in that locker room. And what an incredible win to go on the road and just to answer time after time when North Carolina looked to grab back the momentum, and here it is, the play of the game, the last play of the game, and the interception. So many great linebackers have come through this program here in recent years and waiting his turn, James Jackson. It was Nick Jackson the last couple of years, but it's a new Jackson in town. He's moved spots so Cam Robinson, the freshman, can get in there and make some plays. And here it's Johnny on the spot for James Jackson to seal the deal against the number 10 undefeated North Carolina, giving them their first loss of the season. We thank you for watching ACC football on the CW. Our final score from Chapel Hill, 31-27 Virginia. Tune in next week for another ACC showdown. Our coverage starts 2 Eastern right here on the CW. Check your local listings for James Bates, Trevor Scales, and our fantastic crew. I'm Tom Worby. Thanks so much for watching. So long from Chapel Hill. The Cavaliers leave with the upset win, 31-27.